Greetings and welcome back to Room 303 AP English and our Roberts Lectures on Poetry. We turn now to Elizabeth Barrett Browning's Sonnets from the Portuguese, uh, Sonnet number 14, If Thou Must Love Me, from 1850. Now, of course, Elizabeth Barrett Browning we know well in 303. We love her stuff. Of course, we've studied Sonnet 43, How Do I Love Thee, Let Me Count the Ways. And, of course, we understand our study of Elizabeth Barrett Browning so much better after our study of her husband, Robert Browning and those two, especially those two powerful dramatic monologues that we have that we've studied together, *Last Duchess* and *Prophyrus Lover*. And in fact, when we finished our study of *Prophyrus Lover*, you'll remember. So we we love to point out that once long ago, a student asked, "Man, I wouldn't have liked to have been his girl, as in Robert Browning's girl." I mean, what kind of lunatic writes those kinds of poems? And yet, uh, when we looked across the page in our textbook, there was Elizabeth Barrett Browning, and of course, the relationship between she and Robert. Robert Browning is quite a remarkable story. Bar Elizabeth Barrett Browning, of course, is a powerful poet in her own right, right? And we want to give her that, that due credit. Um, a poet of the Victorian era, born in 1806 and dies in, uh, in uh, 1861. She, um, she is the, old, the, the oldest of 12 children. Her sonnets are the Portuguese, and it's an interesting fact, the name even of these collection of poems that she wrote, published first in 1850. 44 uh, love sonnets that she wrote. Now, and in some ways, it's kind of a joke. That, again, we said this before, the, the title here. Um, she didn't want for the poems to be read as too personal, so she played around with the notion of pretending as if she was translating them out of another language. And it was, in fact, Robert Browning who made the suggestion that maybe uh, you know she should do, uh, use the Portuguese as being this kind of really exotic uh, type of origination of, of the poems. Let's look now at Sonnet 14, one of the more anthologized of her, of her 44 love sonnets, especially today, although as we've said before, Sonnet 43, How Do I Love Thee, Let Me Count the Ways, probably the most famous of all of those sonnets, but this, one, this one's quite a remarkable poem. I want to point out right away for your notes at 2B at especially, the tone of this poem, okay? The speaker's tone. So as we begin now uh, to play this game, I've got a professional reader who will read this for us. Let's listen to the tone and the suggestion, if thou must love me, and then the tone that's specific to this one. Here we go. If thou must love me, let it be for naught, except for love's sake only. Do not say, I love her for her smile, her look, her way of speaking gently, for a trick of thought that falls in well with mine, and certes brought a sense of pleasant ease on such a day. For these things in themselves, beloved, may be changed or changed for thee, and love so wrought may be unwrought so. Neither love me for thine own dear pities wiping my cheeks dry. A creature might forget to weep, who bore thy comfort long, and lose thy love thereby. But love me for love's sake, that evermore thou mayst love on through love's eternity. The genius of this poem is that it is crafted in a in, in, in a multi-leveled way. Go back to our study of Milton and especially Paradise Lost to feel uh, that we are in good company here, right? For example, let's just play a couple of games of 2B really quickly. Notice, for example, your end rhyme. Not, say, way, thought. Brought, day, may, wrought. Do you see it? Notice the A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A construction. And then at line 9, 10, We'll have four dry bore thereby more, and then eternity will be your sight rhyme with thereby. Notice as well that we are playing here with a very ancient tradition. Go back to our study of Shakespeare's Sonnet 116 and the idea from Plato's Symposium, the notion of the, the, the perfection of love. Before birth, you're a sphere. You're severed in half. And then those two parts of you go out, one into you, one into someone else. And then like magnets, you're always trying to find your soulmate, your significant other. And then when you do find that individual, you complete me is, of course, the, the famous rendering or idea. We're playing a very similar kind of game here. Notice she begins with that word if. If 
which will lead then to line nine with uh, uh, neither love me. If thou must love me, let it be for naught. In other words, don't love me for any other reason than for love's sake only, right? Don't say, I love her smile. We immediately think of Sonnet 116. And of course, Elizabeth Barrett Browning and her readers of her day are steeped in, of course, Shakespearean sonnets, so they know very well what it is she's kind of playing off of with this one. Don't love me for my smile or my look, her way of speaking gently, for a trick of thought. In other words, don't love me for these other attributes because, quite frankly, all of those could go away, right? In other words, it's, it's very possible for these things in themselves, beloved, may be changed or changed for thee. And love, so wrought, may be unwrought, so. Notice wrought and not the playing off of that sound, right? Neither love me for thine own dear pities, wiping my cheeks dry. In other words, don't just love me because I love you. I hope that our love is symbiotic. We think immediately of John Donne's valediction forbidding morning. You can go back and take a look at our lecture on that on that poem. That poem work, works so well as as we think about this uh, as we think about this poem, right? Finally, she says, "Love me for love's sake, that evermore thou mayest love on through love's eternity." And again, we're building right off of Plato's notion in Symposium that love is one of those notions of eternality, right? Of course, at 2A, well, obviously, love is somehow transcendent to this notion of physical beauty. At 2B, we mentioned our rhyme scheme. We also started out by talking about the ironic tone. Notice she says, don't love me, but love me. It's brilliant. It's quite lovely. At 3A, of course, we think, as we already said, of Sonnet 43, of Elizabeth Barrett Browning's, and, of course, Shakespeare's Sonnets 116 and 130, and any number, uh, any number of other ones that, that come to mind as well. Uh, you know, To My Dear and Loving Husband comes to mind as well as a title that we've given, uh, you know, the Bradstreet poem that we've given a lecture on as well. Finally, at 3B, how, uh, just a question to try and relate this to you, how or what, for what reasons do you wish to be loved? If, if you are to be loved, what is it that you hope you are loved for, especially if you have a significant other in your life? And it's interesting to ask the question to the significant other, why do you love me? But it's even more interesting to say, I don't want you to love me because of this, this, and this. I want you to love me for love's sake. Is that even possible, do you think? Well, there you go. Elizabeth Barrett Browning continuing to prove to us in 303 just how much and why we love her stuff so much. Thank you.